spinal immobilization. This is an EMS update. It's February 2014. So the question is, are backboards going to go the way of the dodo and become extinct in our practice uh, from an EMS standpoint? Well, one of the questions is, where in the world did backboards come from? Uh, there was some work in the 1960s, uh, and here's an article in 1968 from the Journal of Trauma uh, saying that firm immobilization and inline traction are the basic principles of extraction. Uh, there were a few references, and uh, this came out of some of the work from the Vietnam War. But is there any evidence that this actually helps? Well, uh, if you're familiar with the Cochrane Library, they do a big review of uh, data. They're very evidence-based. This was an Annals of Emergency Medicine article in 2006 that basically says the uh, immobilization um, effect on mortality uh, is uncertain and that there is the possibility of increasing harm. Uh, but this left it fairly vague, saying, look, we don't see any evidence for its benefit, um, and we are recognizing that there may be some uh, potential harm, so uh, we're not really uh, uh, going to firmly endorse this. And Spine of uh, 1999, this is another article, they took some healthy volunteers and strapped them down, put them in collars, and put them in a simulated ambulance motion and measured the amount of movement of their spine and basically said the backboard and seat collar did not adequately um, immobilize for what we're trying to do. In Critical Care, um, or Journal of Trauma, Injury, Infection, Critical Care of August 1998, uh, so this goes back a ways, uh, their quote out of their article was, full cervical immobilization is a myth. Uh, and they put on these uh, collars and measured the amount of uh, movement available and said, look, this is not immobilizing the spine like we would want. Well, is there any evidence of harm? Um, this is looking at pulmonary function and uh, healthy people that were non-smokers. Again, 1988. Look, so this goes back a ways, and said that this uh, these devices do impede the ability to take good respirations, and there is a restrictive effect on the pulmonary function. All right. There's also a concern that uh, if you need to obtain an airway, the collar and the backboard may limit the ability to adequately get the airway. Uh, those of us that have dealt with patients on the backboards uh, are all aware of the potential for aspiration if they begin to vomit. Uh, they've measured ICP and putting a patient in a collar uh, can increase the intracranial pressure um, and obviously pain and skin breakdown or uh, other issues that we are uh, aware of. Uh, breakdown can occur you know, with a relatively short time frame. Uh, especially in old, uh, frail people uh, with bony prominences and thin skin. Uh, one of the questions is, well, we do a lot of this, but how how common are spinal fractures? Well, one of the largest studies, the Nexus study, um, about 2.4%, almost 2.5% of uh, blunt trauma patients had a spinal injury. And in a 2006 spine article, they measured it. Uh, this was, I think, a Canadian sample uh, between 42 and 51 injuries per 1 million uh, of a patient population, so not very common. All right, so what are we to do? Well, it looks like uh, backboards have some limited utility, uh, so we probably don't need to put every patient on a backboard in a C collar if we've got some uh, reason that we can uh, avoid doing that. Uh, if we use the nexus criteria, right, so if the patient doesn't have any focal neurologic deficit, there is no midline spinal tenderness present, the patient is not intoxicated, there is no altered level of consciousness, and by your best estimate, there is no significant distracting injury, then we can probably avoid all this mess of the collar and the backboard. So again, let's go over our take home points. What's the evidence of backboards? Well, that's uh, hard to find any. Uh, is there any harm? Yeah, potentially. Uh, and what about spinal injuries? They're rare. So I think uh, let's use common sense um, with backboards. Uh, uh, the use of backboards can facilitate the movement of patients uh, and can be helpful getting a patient uh, from the scene into the ambulance. But wherever feasible and wherever uh, possible, I think uh, reducing the use of uh, these restrictor backboards may be uh, beneficial. Again, uh, we need to use some common sense and um, uh, with this, I don't. I'm not trying to say we should completely eliminate the use of backboards, uh, but as it stands today, they're probably way overused. All right, thanks.